Hi and welcome to this masterclass on PR 101. We're very lucky tonight to be joined by Kate Dinon. Kate has over 15 years of experience working for corporate clients including Mercedes-Benz and she also has very extensive experience as you can see from um, the presentation working with startups. So she's here tonight to provide us with some practical tips and guidance on PR 101. Thank you Kate. Thanks so much Lizzie Ann, and thanks very much to MAP for having me and for putting these amazing events on for, um, for founders. It's, it's, I'm sure that everyone finds it really useful and I'm really happy to be here. I'm so happy to see so many people here to learn more about PR and how to do it. I've tried to keep it quite practical so that I hope you get some stuff that you can really take away and use and um, I'm really looking forward to the questions at the end. I'm sure there are, I'm sure there are many. Um, I'm going to start with the obligatory put your hand up. Um, who is pre-launch here? Who's a founder that's pre-launch? Okay. Any founders that have launched, post-launch? Okay, couple. And anyone that's pitched media before, put your hand up to try and get coverage. And leave it up if you've got coverage. Okay. Um, it's really useful for me to kind of see the experience and, you know, where you guys are at in the room. So um, as Lizzie and said, I've got 15 years of experience in PR and it was corporate PR mostly until a couple of years ago when I was really lucky and fortunate to start working with startups. So I started with Realaz. Some of you might know that's the OWL logo down the bottom there. They're a real estate startup that are doing price predictions on property um, because underquoting is a massive problem in the market as I'm sure anyone that's looked at trying to buy property would know. And um, so they've built this amazing algorithm that determines prices within 5%, which is great. And through that, they've done a lot of lobbying and there's been legislation changes. And so that's been a great client. And I, I love the Realize team. Um, Healthkit, a digital health startup here at Melbourne based. Gemini 3, which is a job sharing startup. So in um, future of work type startup in Sydney. Platter, which is an augmented reality startup here in Melbourne that News Corp invested in. New Zealand Trade and Enterprise, and there they have about 10 startups here in, in Australia that I've been helping. Monash University have this really cool app called the Monash University Low FODMAP Diet. Not a great name. Um, the FODMAP <laughs> is what we wanted to call it, but didn't quite get there. But there, it's a great product. They've done over a million dollars in sales through the App Store. Uh, Touchpoint Group have an AI product for customer service. And the circle on the side there is OneStack, who are um, uh, Gavin Appel and Jonathan Jeffries, who do a lot of consulting to startups about how to scale internationally. So that's a, a section of startups that I've worked with more recently, just to give you a sense of the types of businesses that I've worked with. Um, and you can see that it's really across industries. So um, that's where my experience is coming from. And I'm going to use some real examples for you tonight to give you a real, you know, how, to, how the process works and some real press releases and real pitches and things like that. So the first thing, like anything, have an objective and be clear on who you're trying to communicate with. Who is the target audience? Um, PR can be extremely useful as opposed to marketing. So I'm not going to talk about marketing tonight. I'm going to really talk about PR, which is public relations, which is media relations. Um, so I'm not going to cover social media, but I'm more going to cover how you can use the media to meet some of your objectives. So if it's about customer acquisition, whether that's B2B or B2C, whether you're trying to attract investors now or in the future, uh, whether you're trying to attract partners, whether you are just trying to get the word out about so you, uh, get the word out about your startup so you can hire great talent, whether you need to do some lobbying if you've got regulatory issues that you're going to come up against in your startup. If you need to raise awareness more generally about whatever your cause is or whatever your startup is, you know, if there's education in the market required, you can raise awareness through the media. And if it's about building your profile as the founder or building the profile of some of your team to position them as industry experts, then PR, I think, can be really effective. So these are some of the objectives that you can have, but I think it's 
like when you do anything, having an objective first and then being clear about who it is that you're actually trying to communicate with will help you get the best outcomes from a PR perspective. So I'm just, this is today's news. Um, there's a great tool called the Newsbot, which I'll show you at the end, but uh, just to show you that these are the types of things that get coverage. So Uber partners with a trip planning, there's a partnership. Innovation Exchange partners with USAID, another partnership. Sydney Startup Medical Channel raises 25 million, a funding announcement. Australia becomes second launch market for Square, market entry story or product launch story. Startup Smart, is this the best Australian tech company? That's an opinion piece. Um, again, the medical channel, and I can't uh, not mention Melbourne Accelerator Program secures six-figure investment from Cause Chambers Westgarth um, to offer free legal advice to startups. So just to give you a sense of, you know, these are the types of things that the media write about every day. And the more you can formulate your news into something that they can just run with, the more chance you're going to have of getting it picked up. So if you're not already reading, you know, the media, you know, read, reading the coverage in your industry, in the tech industry, then I really recommend that you should be, um, especially if you are trying to achieve PR outcomes. So that how do you get PR? Well, you've got to be newsworthy. That's the most important thing. So, you know, one of the conversations I have pretty regularly with clients and potential clients is no one cares. Like, you know, you think it's really interesting because it's your baby and you put your heart and soul into it and you work on it all the time, but unless you can communicate it in a way that's going to make me care, you're not going to get coverage. So you need to be newsworthy. Now, can anything be newsworthy? Yes. But if you get to the point where you're about to launch and you've got your press release and you haven't really thought about, well, what's the angle here? How am I going to make people care about what I have to say, about what my, my business is? Then you're not going to be successful. So the most important thing is to just think about well, how am I going to be newsworthy? So what's newsworthy? Is what you're doing truly new or different? I don't know. Does it reveal something or does it add new information? Does it involve high profile people? Will it impact at an industry level or high profile companies? Is it topical and relevant to any news of the day or to any global trends? And the most important thing, if you want to get any coverage, uh, so that's from a launch perspective, but also ongoing, is you have to have a point of view and you have to actually say something. You can't be a robot. You can't, you know, you can't talk in press release language. You need to really have an opinion and then be prepared to back it up. That's what the media are looking for. They're looking for people that have something to say. So you've got to come up with what is it that you have to say. And we'll talk a bit more about that. How to pitch. So this was in the, um, the sales pitch for the masterclass. One of the things we said we talk about is you know, how to pitch. So I'm going to just go into uh, you know, a bit of a step-by-step -step process. So the first thing you need to do is create a media list. And you need to become familiar with how it all works, what gets coverage, um, which journalists are writing about what, that sort of thing. So the best hack to do it, the best way to do it without having to spend lots of effort and spend lots of money is find a competitor that has already obviously paid for PR because they've got lots of good coverage, go to their news page or Google, Google them and there's your starting point. So say your competitors had 10 stories in the press in the last 12 months Go to each one, what's the publication, who's the journalist, what did they write about, get a sense of how they covered their news. It's the quickest way to build your media list because then all of a sudden you already know these are the journalists that are going to care about what I'm doing. So that's a, a, a way you can avoid having to pay PR people to, uh, to help you do that piece of work. Then follow all of those journalists on Twitter. If you're not on Twitter, I recommend that you should be if you're a, a founder because that still is where all of the news breaks and where all the journalists are looking for information and where you can really uh, stay on top of what's happening in the industry. Read everything. Can't recommend that highly enough. Read everything that's relevant for your business, what your competitors are doing, what's happening in your industry, not just here, but overseas particularly. Um, make insightful comments on articles, on the actual article page because believe me they get read. Um, retweet, the, retweet journalists stories, share stories with comments and engage. Engage with the journalists that, that cover 
technology or cover your industry if you've got more of an industry type um, business. Introduce yourself at events. Go, go around and talk to everyone. Go and introduce yourself. Tell them what you're doing. Ask them if they know anyone that can help you. Can't recommend that highly enough. And relationships, not lists. It's for me, public relations is very much about building relationships and journalists much prefer to talk to founders than they, than they do to PR people. So build, try and establish who are those handful of journalists or those handful of influential people in my industry that have strong word of mouth, who are they and how can I create a meaningful relationship with them and as early as possible. Um, so there is, you know, one approach to PR is the, the blast, you know, the email blast to 400 people on a list to, with a mail merge. Do not do that. That is not a good way to get coverage. That is a good way to fill up journalist inbox with spam and to, um, you know, you'd be lucky if you get, if you get one story out of that, I'd be absolutely surprised, and, you know, unless you're announcing a partnership with Uber or something. But I wouldn't, um, I would not bother with that. It doesn't work. So once you have your list of publications, segment them. So is it business press, is it tech press, is it trade press? And I wouldn't underestimate the power of trade press. Um, whatever you're doing, I guarantee you there's a trade publication that covers your industry. So figure out who they are, find out who the editor is, read it, interact with them, find a way, find a meaningful way to interact with the publication. Blogs, of course, if they're influential and they're going to help you meet your objectives. Broadcast media, particularly if you're doing a, a B2C business. Um, I was talking to someone just earlier who'd had some great coverage on radio, which led to some great sales. So I think that really depends on the audience that you're trying to talk to, but don't, um, don't underestimate the power of, um, you know, obviously breakfast TV, but also dri radio drive slots and morning slots. Um, and also podcasts, you know, more and more. Podcasts are becoming. Um, I think the, the at the moment, I think where podcasts are at is that I think a lot of journalists and media outlets are looking to see who the guests are for story ideas as well. So I think it's a, they're a good place to, um, to to pitch to as well because they're still looking for content. So long as you find the right ones. This is just an example. I mean, just to show you that it really is kind of basic. You know, this is a, a media list from another client. It's literally probably, I've probably got 40 on the whole list and it's broken up by the type. So is it broadcast media? Is it a trade publication? Is it a business publication? Who's the journalist? What's their title? What's their email? What's their Twitter? What's their phone number? Where are they? And then of course I'll have status and updates columns for my clients to see. But it really, it's not that, you know, there's not that much to it. You've just got to know who the right people are to put in that list and then what you do with that information is obviously the most important. Find your angle and develop the story. So this is, I guess, you know, this is where if you do this right, you'll be successful. So the best way in my experience is to play around with the headlines. Because if you can nail the headline, that's the subject line of the email that goes out. You're either going to, it's either going to get opened or it's not. And it's largely based on, do they know the person that the email is coming from? Yes, they'll probably open it. No, they probably won't, unless you've got a really compelling subject line. So play around with your headline like you would on any EDMs, you know, you'd A-B test. Play around with headlines, talk to your friends. If you know any journalists, ask them. Um, ask PR people if they're nice enough to give you, you know, give you some free advice. But if you get that right and you get your main message right, it becomes quite simple to, to complete the rest. So you have a headline, you have your main message. Of course, you then need your supporting information. Um, you need visuals. I can't speak highly enough about needing striking visuals so you need good photography and you need good screenshots if it's a if it's an app you need good interactive shots of people using your product you need a good media kit especially because you know more than likely if you get coverage it's going to be online not in print and for online great images make a big difference so that you're more likely to get a story picked up if you have a great image um, in your media kit, you should also have an information sheet because you do not want to clog up your press release with all the details about your product or your business. They don't, it doesn't belong there. It belongs in a separate document that goes in your media kit. An FAQ if it's, you know, if it's required. So if there are, if you've got a bit of a tricky business that takes a minute to understand, maybe just spell out what are the most common questions that you get asked with the answers. 
your bio um, or your t and your team bios and some screenshots of your app. Um, do you need a demo for journalists or immediate? No, they're not going to look at it. So don't, don't bother. It's very unlike, very unlikely. So this is an example of a press release for a funding announcement. So this was for Platter. They recently closed a seed round, which where News Corp invested in them. And what I'm what I'm doing is just showing you the structure. So a factual, informative headline that tells you exactly what's in the release and exactly what the news is, the background and what is what is Platter, the context, so why is this news? So of course it's news because it's News Corp and it's 1.1 million and it's augmented reality. They're all things that, you know, add to the appeal. But also you give this context of, you know, annual investment in AR is at an all-time high with a record-breaking US 1.1 billion already invested. And the same report predicted that AR market will be a $150 billion industry by 2020. Big numbers, big trends that show clearly how this fits in a bigger picture. So bring that to life when you pitch, you know, show how this fits in into the context of something bigger. If you have been through any sort of fundraising or pitching processes before, you will have come up with this information. So just work, find a way to work it in to your media materials. Talk about the traction that you've got. So Platter talked about established a blue chip early client base. It's proven the potential for its technology across different industries and different applications. And then some quotes in natural language, really important, exactly as you would say it. Um, and um, more quotes in natural language. So Rupert said, we were blown away by the level of interest and we're pleased to welcome News Corp. That is actually what he said. So, you know, try and make it as conversational as you can. And a call to action. So Platt is currently in private beta and is taking expressions of interest. So, and also of course, images. The link is there to a Dropbox folder, high res, all there, ready to go because time is everything and if they don't have the information they need, you might miss a deadline because, you know, they didn't have an image or they couldn't get access to something. So put everything in, in the release but keep it short. Um, and then, of course, you're about text. Platter have got it down to one, two lines, which is great. You know, if it's two paragraphs, it's way too long. So I think that, you know, one of the key things that you need to do pre-launch is really nail that about whatever your business is called What's the about us? How do you explain your business in one sentence or two sentences? So then this was the pitch. So I've developed the press release. This is the pitch. So you can see the subject line is the, pretty much the title of the press release. Hi, journalist. Thought this would be of interest for your readers. Let me know if you're interested in talking to Rupert. Or if there's any. So if you, get the, if you get the press release right and the headline right, that is literally the pitch. You don't need to write an email that's this long to the journalist to get them interested. They're going to either want it or not. How much you put in the body of your email isn't going to change that. They will know pretty much straight away if this is something that they're interested in or not. So don't, don't waste your time or theirs by going into detail. Um, but personalise every email. So if you're pitching five journalists, write each one individually. Try not to copy and paste and definitely, um, definitely get the name right. Um, and so from there, you can see this particular story got picked up in about 30 or 40 different publications. This is just a couple of them just to show you, I guess, the way people position it in different publications. So the Startup Smart, um, you know, they did the whole, it looks to change the way we see the world, great. Startup Daily pretty much used the headline that we wrote in the press release, the Australian, of course, it's all about News Corp because they're the investor, the owner of the paper is the investor. And then in the trade press, which is my umbrella, which is important media for um, that business, um, you can just sort of see the different way it got run. But it got, it got really good pickup and you know, over about a week. So the first day there were probably 20 stories and then there were maybe five and then five and then, you know, a couple more. So, um, so that announcement went, went really well. Not everyone's in the fortunate position of having $1.1 million invested in them by News Corp though, I understand that. Um, so other examples, another example is a partnership example. So don't underestimate the, the value of taking on a partner that already has a name and an audience, particularly with customers that you're trying to acquire. 
So when you're building a startup, I do not think that you need to go from zero to 100 on your own. I think that you can find partners that already have a trusted relationship with the consumers that you're trying to reach and find ways to partner with them. So uh, this is not exactly what happened in, in HealthKit's case, but just to give you an example of a partnership um, press release, again, put an impressive number in the headline. So Australian digital health platform HealthKit partners with Data61's CoView, which is a CSIRO um, initiative, giving video consultation capability to more than 15,000 Australian health practitioners. So again, really tells you everything in the headline you get an impressive number, more than 15,000 health practitioners, you spark interest. What are the facts? What's the quote? And again, what's the global relevance in the broader trend? So in this case, we talked about the fact that the American Medical Association had recently released their first guidelines for telehealth, which further legitimises and endorses the use of telehealth in mainstream healthcare. So again, why is this important in Australia? How is this relevant globally? And, and lay it out. Talk about what the impact of the partnership is for your business and for your users. Don't forget they'll be reading it too, more, more than likely. Um, obviously a quote from your partner and then a call to action and what comes next. So that one um, led to, again, you know, led to some really good coverage. And you can see if you get the headline right, usually the, the media outlet will probably run with what you've written in most cases. Um, in that particular example, actually, I'll go back to the platter example for a minute. Of the 30 or 40 stories, I would say probably only three journalists actually called, wanted to talk to Rupert and get a different quote. Every other publication was happy to use the quotes that were provided in the press release. So you can see that for all the planning and work we did to do the preparation, once you get it into the right hands, it, it, it takes off on its own. So in this example, uh, for HealthKit, I don't think anyone wanted an additional quote. No, no, sorry, one, one of the outlets wanted to talk to the CEO, the co-founder. So if you get it right up front and you have all the images, you have all the information and you get the timing right, which I'll talk about, it can, you, know, you can get pretty good, pretty good pickup. Another way to get coverage is to be an expert. So what is it that you know that no one else knows or better than anyone else? Everyone has something, especially if you're building a business, you're doing something that no one else is doing, or you're doing it better or you're doing it different. Be really clear about what that point of difference is. What are you passionate about? Something. What is it that you're related to your business? What are you passionate about within that? Why are you doing it? What is that, what's the one-liner for you that really speaks to why personally, why this is such an important mission for you? What do you believe that no one else does? That, that's something that Peter Thiel asks in interviews, which I think is great. And what do you know that would help your target customers? So how can you provide useful advice and information to your customers and your target customers? In, if you can answer those questions, you can start to develop some really good ideas that you can pitch to the media that will then get picked up. So this is an example from uh, my client OneStack, who are, um, I mentioned them at the start, they do um, advisory to startups that are scaling internationally and they also advise global startups that are doing market entry strategies into Australia and New Zealand. And they, as part of what they do, they, they go to Silicon Valley a couple of times a year and they work with you know, the, the, some of the bigger startups globally like Stripe, etc., to help them do market entry here. So what do they know that no one else knows well? They are in Silicon Valley quite a lot. Gavin, one of the co-founders, is an ex-VC. So the op-ed idea, the op and the op-ed is, um, is an opinion piece that you write that gets published as written by you in a publication. What do founders need to think about when making their pilgrimage to Silicon Valley? So they'd just been on a trip. We had the idea to take, what did you pick up on that trip? What are the five tips that you'd give founders that are going over to Silicon Valley? Pitch that to a publication and that became five things Aussie founders need to consider when well, pretty much, again, the headline that we wrote is what, um, is what ran. And that, became, that was a 700 word article by Gavin, my client. So it doesn't have to be news is what I'm saying. You can find another way to get the word out about your company and build your profile by really thinking about what is it that you know and what information can you contribute to this ecosystem 
that no one else knows or that you're really the expert in. So really think about what it is that you are an expert in better than anyone else. I'm just going to talk briefly about the different stages of development of a startup and what you can do from a PR perspective at each stage. It looks like a busy slide, but really I've just taken a, a fairly standard startup development phases uh, diagram, so pre-startup, so you've got your vision and mission stage, your minimum viable product stage, your product market fit and your scaling stage. And I've just mapped what I think you can do from a PR perspective at each stage. So in the very early stages of ideation, I, th I think it's really just about familiarising yourself with the, with the press, the tech press, the industry press, the business press if it's relevant for your business. Who are the top 10 influencers that could materially make a difference to your business if you, if you had a relationship with them. Some of them might be journalists, they might be politicians, they might be, they might be the leaders of industry bodies, they might be CEOs of other organisations, they might be influential bloggers. Um, but in every, you know, every business there will be 10 people that could really help you if, if they knew about you and they cared about you and they had a way to interact with you. So figure out who they are and find a meaningful way to connect with them. So not just a, hey, can I pick your brain, can I have a coffee? No, but really think about what is a way that I could connect with this person and help them in some way. And if you can't think of it, just wait. And when, it, when the idea comes to you, then contact them. If it takes five years, it takes five years, but the first shot's the best shot. And go to events, relevant events. You know, be like, you know, be at these things, go to the pitch nights, Journal, go to the events the journalists go to and go up and introduce yourself. Tell them what you're doing. They're so happy to hear from founders. Um, so that's what I, the ideation stage, I think it's all about familiarisation. Um, the next stage, develop. What's the space that you want to claim? So what's, the, what's your area of expertise? What's your line of, I hate thought leadership as a term, but for want of a better word, what is it that you can bring that no one else can bring? And really start to hone that, start to hone your messaging, start to hone your, your big idea and your supporting ideas. Build your media list. So just start to see, okay, this person's writing about this competitor, this person's writing about the industry, keep notes of that, keep a list, just so you know. Because there's no point if you want to get coverage in the, say you want to get coverage in the age, you've got to write to the right journalist or you've got, no, you've got no chance. So you've got to know who that right journalist is. There's no point writing to the wrong person. They, they won't read it or it'll annoy them. Um, so you've got, so you know, if you're reading articles and you see something that's relevant for you, put it in your media list. And find partners. Find, as I mentioned before, you don't have to go from zero to 100 on your own. Find those partners that are out there that aren't competing with you but are serving the same customer market and find interesting ways that you can do stuff together. Whether that's share content, you write an article for their EDM maybe, and they write one for yours, or offer their users a free trial of your product, or you know, find a way to do something so that you can grow your audience through a partner. Pre-launch, start to engage with the reporters a little bit in the media, whether that's retweeting their articles or commenting or giving them a call. Probably wouldn't recommend that actually uh, until you've got news, but find a, if you can find a way to engage, then engage. Try and speak at events on panels. There's a lot of events going on in Melbourne, so three a day or something I heard recently. So put your hand up to go and talk about the experience of building a startup or whatever it might be and start to Familiar, you know, start to familiarise yourself with speaking, if you're not already speaking in public, explaining your business to gr um, rooms of strangers uh, and getting asked questions by the moderator. It's a good, it's a really good thing to do. Test different messages. So try different ways of explaining what your startup is, what your business is and see what works. See what works with your friends and family and develop your boilerplate, which is your about us text. It's really important that you nail that. If you want to engage any consultants or anyone to help you, if you haven't done that work, the work that they do for you is going to be wasted effort until you get that right. So really try and nail that, you know, that maximum one paragraph, but ideally two liner that explains your business in its entirety. At launch, I recommend hosting your own event. It can be really small. 
but do something in a you know something in a really interesting way that allows you to to show the spirit and the values of your company but also your product or your business and invite industry influencers along invite media along think about the timing if you want to do that um, but I think it's really powerful to to convene your own groups convene your own events I'm going to have questions at the end but I'll come back to you. Um, a press release. A lot of people say a press release is dead. No, they're definitely not dead. You need one version of the truth. You need one document that contains all of the facts about whatever your announcement is. But the press release is not the pitch. So that's the difference. The press release is a really important piece of information. If you pitch right, the journalist will open the press release and they'll use that in writing their article. So you definitely need one. Um, write an op-ed, so write your own, you know, six to eight hundred word essay about why your business is important, how it's going to change the industry or try not to use the word disrupt, but how it's going, why it's important, how it fits in a global trend, the traction that you've had, you know, write your own, write your own essay and you'd be surprised, you know, that they get picked up really well. And have case studies, so if you've got a um, most businesses get used by someone. Have case studies of real life people that use your business, have images, have quotes from them because if you want to get any mainstream type media, if you're the Herald Sun or TV, they want to make it, they want to put a human interest side to it. So ha make it human. And to do that, if you've got your own case studies and people that are prepared to, you know, have their face and name in the paper and a quote or whatever, it'll make it a lot easier because then the journalist doesn't have to go and find people that they can use for the story and the photographer doesn't have to find people. So do as much of that thinking and pre-work up front as you can. And then once you own the space and you're growing and you're scaling internationally and all of those things, then you just, you just own the space. You just cement your place as the leader in what you're doing. You pitch regular expert stories. You regularly and proactively update your media contacts. You know, but there's probably, for any one company, there wouldn't be more than 10 journos that are really, you know, not important, but that are really interested in what you're doing. And if you can develop those direct relationships as early as possible, fantastic. Like I said before, they much prefer to talk to you than they do to talk to me. So um, develop those relationships and keep them, maintain them, and don't just use them when you need something. You know, give them information too. Give them briefings on what's happening in the industry or... Offer comment when a story breaks. You know, in your industry, if a big story breaks and you think it's going to get picked up, write a one-liner comment and send it to the journalist and say, this is my take on it. That sort of a thing. Stay top of mind. And host your own events. Host your own influencer and media events. Um, I think that's really important. Um, how not to end up a PR fail on Twitter. Avoid jargon and superlatives. So this is a, an email that an actual editor sent me. Um, she said, sorry to be critical, Kate, but this is too jargon-filled. Also not clear which company we're talking about. Is this Ford? What legacy? It needs to show more practical results. What does shared vision, language and tools actually mean? Also, let's not take any more people on journeys. It's such a cliche. So <laughs> I'm actually really grateful to get that feedback. Editors would not always take the time. This was an editor I hadn't worked with before. Um, it really annoys them when they get you know, like you would never sit down if you're explaining your business to someone, you'd never say that, you know, you'd never speak in that language. So don't write in that language. This was a good wake up call for me. Um, this was a while ago, but I, I'll never forget it. And yeah, so just avoid that and avoid superlatives. So, you know, I, I'm for victim to it too, but we're excited, we're pleased. No, find, find better words, find a better way to, to describe what you're doing. Um, another one. Just some tweets. We can't say innovate or disrupt anymore. What about paradigm shifting game changer? Is that good? Um, how to get me to delete an email pitch, right? Revolutionize, disrupt, exciting, but nothing about what your company does. I think it's really easy to turn into a robot when you write press releases. Um, I think it's just, a, I don't know why, as soon as you start writing a press release, you tend to do that. Just whatever you do, of take all of those buzzwords out because if you if you don't have a story without those buzzwords you don't have a story and I think that's a really important thing too is be realistic about whether or not you're going to get coverage don't think that people are automatically going to care you really need to find the right angle and the right context to place your story in to get coverage 
unless you're closing a $10 million Series A or a 10 million seed round, which would be mass massive, you know, unless you've got those sorts of uh, achievements, you're not going to get pick up unless you're quite clever about how you position it. Timing is everything. Um, this is a tweet from a journalist saying, hello, this is a PR person. We wondered if you were interested in a story we dropped hours ago somewhere else. So don't give it to one publication and then three hours later call another one, especially their competitor, and be like, hey, I've got this story for you. Don't do that. You know, really think about the way the industry works and the way the, you know, really think about, be quite strategic in how you pitch. And that's why I think, you know, that's where PR people can, can be really useful because it's about understanding the way, the dynamics and the way things work. Um, but as a general rule, if you're going to give an exclusive to someone, that's fine, do that, um, but honour that and just think about the timing um, when, you, when you release. The other thing on timing is if you're all set to go and you've built it up and it's going to be the 2nd of October and then massive news happens on the 2nd of October, don't put your release out, wait. Wait a few days till it dies down. So don't try and compete, you know, with bigger news because you're not going to get any coverage. So be prepared to shift your deadline on the day if you get a sense that you're not going to get picked up. Give yourself the best chance of success. Don't get the journo's name wrong. Um, so basic, There's like I didn't know that there was such a thing as this PR fail uh, hashtag on Twitter and it's, it's, I think it must be, yeah, it's pretty big. And I mean, you don't need to read them, but this is just a bunch of journalists saying, you got my name wrong. Don't get the journalist's name wrong, don't get their gender wrong. Um, Try not to copy and paste. You can totally tell in Gmail when you've copied and pasted because the text is kind of purple instead of being, you know, black. Don't do that. Take the time. It will take you an extra 10 seconds. Take the time to make it look like you care, even if you, even if you don't. Um, and take a hint. This is Denim, who's the editor of um, Startup Smart. This is him saying, me, whenever a PR person calls to follow up on an email. Um, I just really, yeah. As in Kanye's words, I just really don't care. So if you email once, okay, and you don't get anything back, it's okay to wait one, two days, email again. Okay, don't email again after that. If they don't answer after the second one, they're not, move on. And no answer is a no. So don't then call them, don't pester them. Take a hint, move on, try and, you know, figure out what, why it didn't land properly and try and fix it for next time. And say thank you. Um, it's so, you know, it's so basic, but if you get coverage, right, and I thought it'd be nice to just see, you know, Brad is topical this week. Um, yeah, write them an email, a short one, don't send anything, just, you know, don't send, you know, I don't know, whatever you would send, don't send a present, but just write a short email and say thanks very much for the coverage. That's all you need to do. And if you're lucky enough to get picked up without even you knowing and you, you find yourself mentioned in the press, Follow up, call the journalist, say thanks very much, let me tell you more about my business. Or if you see your competitors get press, call them and say, hey, I've, you've written about this, I'm also doing this. If you're writing a bigger roundup piece or if you wanted to do a follow up, I've got this unique take on it. Don't be afraid to engage, but just only engage when you've got something meaningful to add to the discourse. Um, a couple of hacks, a couple of little tools that I use that I thought I'd just share. Um, one of them is this amazing website. You get five free goes a month. It's called crystalnose.com. And it's this personality profiler that basically takes all the public information and everything you've written publicly and makes a personality profile of you. So David Swan is a journalist at The Australian, the tech journalist at The Australian. David, anyway, you can see, read all about David there and then it tells you when emailing David, use an emoticon, use emotionally expressive language, appeal to his feelings. So I emailed that to David and said, Swanee, is that correct about you? And are you okay if I share that with the Map Masterclass? And he said, ha ha, geez, that's crazy, Kate. And yes, spot on, almost too spot on, and I'm totally cool with whatever you want to do with that. So there are free tools out there that you can use. You know, if you're going to write to a journalist, put their name in and see what it says. And why wouldn't you, you know? It, it just comes back and gives you some really useful tips on it. And if, if it's from a sales perspective, if you're trying to, you know, if you've got important people that you're about to meet, it, I've tried it with quite a few people and everyone seems to think it's accurate, so why not? Um, Sourcebottle.com, so this is an Australian website that allows, you, allows journalists basically to put a call out to this database if they want ideas for a story. 
So you can sign up, you can pick your areas of interest. So if you're a real estate startup, you can tick real estate, you can tick tech. And then every day you'll get an email with all the different stories that journalists are looking for um, sources for, and then you can pitch. So this was one yesterday. If you've got a recruitment startup, you never know, someone in the room might, they want to know how to reach, um, how employers can reach millennials through recruitment. And this is a national business publication. It tells you what they're looking for. It gives you one blank box of text. You can write a pitch and you never know, you get picked up. So it's good practice to get into as well, just to see the types of things that journalists are writing about and the way they're positioning their stories. And it's good practice for you to write a few, you know, um, write a few pitches and see if you get anywhere. This is a really cool tool for generating headlines. Um, it's called Content Idea Generator. So I just put in AR. Why AR is scarier than Taylor Swift. 19 things your boss expects you to know about AR. Um, oh yeah, got that one. Oh, anyway, I had five, but it's only showing you two. But it just goes through and gives you like, I don't know, an infinite number of headlines. But if you wait a minute, you'll find one that's actually really good and probably better than what you would have come up with yourself. So use these free tools. And especially if you're pitching expert type stories, these are the types of headlines that you'll see on, you know, Business Insider and um, all, a lot of the online publications. So you, you know, make use of these free tools. There's another really great free tool called Hemingway App, where it's essentially it's a it's an, a real time text editor, but it grades your writing. So you can see it's basically said that this is terrible. Um, but this is the press release I did for Platter. You can see it says six of the eight sentences are very hard to read. Uh, there's one adverb, remove it. Anyway, it, it just gives you a really good assessment of your writing. And I think when you're writing a press release, you should try and keep it as basic and factual as possible. Avoid adverbs, avoid passive voice, avoid you know, jargon. So again, it's a, good, it's a good tool, good free tool. And then uh, one more, or there's two more actually, Mediascope, which is another free tool, which basically shows you all of the different media publications in Australia. So this is just the newspapers, but it, it breaks it out by industry. So if you're, again, let's use real estate, it, would, it has a real estate version of this with all the different publications that cover real estate. So again, a really quick way for you to get a sense of, okay, or even just for you to say, okay, which of those do, do we think our target audience is reading and influenced by, and therefore, who should we pitch? And then, because I know it's hard to stay on top of all the news that happens, there's a really good news bot that Paul Bennett's made from Airtree um, and now Spaceship, the new uh, super fund that invests in startups. He made this great daily news bot. It's an email you get in your, in your inbox every morning at about 6 a.m. that just covers all of the tech headlines from TechCrunch, um, the AFR, Startup Smart, Startup Daily, and some tweets that have Startup Oz in them. So some of them, you know. So it's just a good daily summary so you don't have to feel like you need to spend too much time reading news or, or going on Twitter. You can basically scan the headlines every morning and then read what, you know, whatever's of relevance for you. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming today. I, I think we're all really grateful to hear from your experience and knowledge of PR and things like that. We're going to write press releases and get stories tomorrow. <laughs> Thank you, Lucy, and thanks everyone for coming. Super thrilled. Thanks.